this on the G4, we don't measure them all the way down, of course. For Got them. it. Just, just that point? Yes, sir. Yeah. And, and then these didn't measure an inch, so you didn't do those? They did, barely. Well, hello and welcome to Outdoor Oklahoma. I'm Todd Craighead. The secret is out. Oklahoma is an incredible big game hunting state. And today, we're here at our headquarters during our annual Rack Madness event. Certified scorers are here to let hunters know just how much their trophies measure up. But this event is so much more than just that. It's really a way to celebrate big game hunting in Oklahoma, a state recognized for its hunters consistently producing some of the biggest deer in the country. Just another reason to love Oklahoma and the adventures that await you. I can remember as a kid always begging my dad to take me either fishing or especially hunting. And then when I got older and became a dad myself, I thought that probably the ultimate would be the opportunity to one day take my own child. Well, my daughter Emily loved to go with me when she was younger, but she wasn't really excited necessarily about the hunt, just the opportunity to get outside. And, um, and then with other activities in school, she became less and less interested. And then I really thought my chance to experience that with her had passed. After college, Emily took a job in Savannah, Georgia, over a thousand miles away. And that was a very hard adjustment. That would be for anybody, but Emily and I are so very close that when uh, we weren't able to see each other literally on a daily basis anymore, um, that, was, that was really, really tough. I don't remember exactly what month it was, but at one point, uh, Emily and I nearly talk every day by phone. She said that she wanted to maybe come back home and go turkey hunting. And I have taken her a few times uh, while she was in college and we were never successful. Uh, but I had a pretty good place and probably the best opportunity to, for her to shoot a bird. And so when she said she wanted to come, man, I was really excited. Well, we're at the airport. This is finally the big day I've been waiting on. Emily flies in in just a few minutes for her big turkey hunt. I haven't seen her since, well, for several months now, uh, since Thanksgiving, I guess. And this will be her first time home in uh, over a year. So um, if she's half as excited as I am, <laughs> it's gonna be great. Emily's just arrived, and I'm gonna greet her outside the terminal, but uh, what she doesn't know is that I've made a sign. I've always wanted to do that for somebody <laughs> getting home, and uh, it's probably gonna embarrass her, but I don't care. That's the parent prerogative there. When I first saw Emily coming through the airport towards me, that's a feeling that I'll never forget. It was like a part of me that was missing had, had come back home. I just heard another one. 
fly down. One, two, three. Okay, those first few are hens. I can't tell. It's so hard to tell. Okay, I just heard another one fly down. I've done it myself. I've missed plenty of turkeys, but that might have been our one and only chance. And oh, I felt so bad for her. All the planning, all the preparation, the expense, and um, that might have been it. It was a lot of fun. I was pretty disappointed at my miss, um, but hopefully tomorrow I can come back and redeem myself. Um, we shot a lot of birds, and so that was pretty cool. It was. It's a pretty cool experience to get to hear your dad do lots of different calls and get him to talk to him. Um, so I really did enjoy it. Dad, what do you think? Well, I think that just because you missed on a Jake this morning, that just means that you're going to get a great big giant tom tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope so. Wish oh well man, thinking. I I can feel for you because I've been there. I've missed some and just felt awful. We decided that it was a gamble, but that we would leave the property and wait and come back the very next morning. But that meant that was her one and only last chance because she was going to have to fly home that afternoon. I think by leaving now and not disturbing the turkeys the rest of the day, we could play cat and mouse and chase them the rest of the day and bump them half a dozen times and get close calls. But every time you do that, you just make them more and more leery. So I think the best bet is just to scoot out of here and try again in the morning. too far. You can try on that third one on the right. Oh, you got him. You got him, Emily. Oh, my gosh. You got him. Thank God. Oh, oh, oh. oh man, that was a lot of pressure. Yeah. Oh, you oh, did it. Gosh. Oh, I'm so proud of you. Oh, my thank gosh. you. Gosh, wow. Oh. You oh. shot five times a turkey. I, <laughs> I only shot one. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh Lord of mercy. Oh. Wow. Oh my goodness, my heart sank on those first two. Oh I know. I'm shocked that they stayed so chill. Yeah, they can just do that. They just don't know what's going on. Wow. Those are Jake's. And oh. Oh. You did it. Thank God. Oh my goodness. And it's I'm goodness. shaking. <laughs> At least he dropped. I mean, oh yeah, he dropped solid right there. Whew. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you did it! Yes. Your first turkey oh, ever. God. This is so cool. I'm so happy. Oh my goodness. 
Oh, there it is. Wow. Your first turkey. Oh, oh wow. Man. I am How so cool. proud of you. Thank <laughs> you. How cool. Gosh, that's <laughs> awesome. I grew up really seeing my dad um, go hunting all the time and be so excited about you know getting deer or getting turkey or going on these adventures um, to all different places across the state. Um, and he made it sound like so much fun, you know, to to get the shot and make a kill, or even just to be out there um, getting to talk to wildlife, whether that's an owl, a coyote, a deer, or a turkey. Um, so it really made me want to try it. Made me want to go out and get, get into the woods and also just get quality time with my dad doing something that we could both enjoy. You, you got it, you're doing it, you're doing it. Oh, gross. <laughs> gross. <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right, that's disgusting. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard anybody say that, but <laughs> oh well. <laughs> well, when I look back on those early years, I realized that um, taking her when she was younger really did actually spark something, even though I didn't think that that spark was alive at all. It was buried deep within her and it came out as an adult. And now I couldn't be any more proud of the fact that she truly is a hunter. She's not just a hunter that goes with her dad. She is a hunter in her own right. And I'm so very proud of her. I'm so excited that I got one. And of course, you know, getting to do that with my dad and have that fantastic experience, I would love to come back and do it again. I'm Frank Hanna. Uh, we're at Lake, Ar Lake of the Arbuckles, and we're fixing to go try to find some fish on the nest, hopefully. Might be a little rough since the lake came up four feet, so we'll see what we can find. Here's the brush pile right there. There's a piece of brush right there, and these are little, that little white dot, and that right there are fish. And there's a fish on that brush pile right there. The reason you know it's on the, because it's on the back side of it in the shadows, and it lights up in the shadows, that, that'll be a fish. Not worth fishing for, but. Nice thing about this stuff under here, it goes all the way out to 150 feet, so just 100. But you lose so much, what is the word, definition of the, the fish and stuff you lose so much of that. That's why I like about 80 to, to 100. Sure does change the game. And when you see a, a line like this right here, that's just a hard object on the bottom. And all that is, it, it's probably an old, the way it looks is an old log or maybe just a, a row of rock, just like a the rock you see on the bank over here. It could be one of those on the bottom. But let's see what happens up here. Do that to me now. Still doing this old school. No power poles. Check out this frog. Look how real this thing looks. Oops, sorry. Didn't let like go of it. Little legs kick on everything. Looks just like a root frog. Which in the water. Does that not look real? Well, right now I'm just kind of going through here looking at the water. It's, it's a little early. The, some of the fog and clouds is still here. They're supposed to be gone by 10 o'clock, is what they said anyway. And uh, so I just kind of look around to see if there's any movement up shallow, if the water is clear enough to see fish. And if it is, we'll have a great day. They had a real bad burn here. As you, all that used to be cedar trees and they'll pull them out in the water. There's a bunch under the water, right down through here. 
and on almost every point out here has got these cedar trees pulled out in the water and sank. Putting rod. I put rod socks on my rods, even in the rod locker, because the boat bounces, and without rod socks on it, you're still gonna, you can break an eye, you can crack a rod, not even know it until the day you start fishing. I'm tying on the biffle bug, just uh, tying it on with palmer knot with a 14 pound test line. It's a sun line. Buy you clippers. <laughs> And don't throw your old line in the lake. What I do is I just put it back in my box up here. Normally I throw just a green pumpkin, but since the water's kind of dirty, I want to throw it's a, a dark watermelon red is what this one's called. And I started putting this end upward I, it seems like I get better hookups that way than doing it the old-fashioned way plus I like the red being on top so they can see a little better in the muddier water I always wet this right here the bends so it doesn't tear the bait up so bad goes on easier doesn't tear it up you see where it measures out right there just take it straight through Lays right there on top, just skin hook it. Perfectly smooth. And here comes the fun part. I'm gonna have some crawdad juice on it. I'm gonna crawdad juice on the bottom. Always put it on their tongue when they pick it up from where their tongues are. If they can taste it, they'll hold on to it longer. Try not to get that on your carpet. <laughs> okay, I gotta be able to see. Look at that screen right there. That's where my bait just came up. I've got the sensitivity up high. You can see where it just shot up from the bottom when it reeled it in real fast. Even an old sonar will still do you a good job. Okay, those fish were there. They were probably fishing. My buddy George Ingram, he passed away back in 2019. He had stomach cancer. And he would always, after he'd miss a fish, he'd go, did you see that? And we go, what? He goes, did you see it? I mean, serious as it could be. And he had this real deep, I'm talking hillbilly sound. And he goes, did you see that form I had on that hook set? So we made his hat up for him, for remembrance of him. So man, did you see that form? I know I'm staying a long time in the spot, I've caught so many four and five pound smallies on this point. It, and six pounds with my grandson. Caught a nine in that cove. I caught two nines in this cove. I'm in too deep of water. Where people make a lot of mistakes at when they're fishing, they're going like, man, in that one spot, that's the only place you get a bite. Well, if they're in one spot of water, then you need to keep your bait in that spot of water all the time. So what do I mean by that? Parallel the bank. Put your boat where you're casting straight down that water line, the same depth you caught that fish at, and it keep, it's, keeping your, it's called keeping your bait in the strike zone, which increases your odds of catching the fish. If they're in five foot, you wanna keep it in five foot. All these fish that I've been seeing and hooking between the six and four foot range. So now since I'm using a lighter line, lighter stuff, I got up here with them. There we go. We're tough little rascals. <laughs> Can you see that little stripe on the end of his tail I was talking about? See it now? Smallmouth, that's what I thought, isn't it? Yep. 
The green sinker did it again. Nice little small mouth, about a pound. Maybe a pound too. Good fish though. It's pretty. Boy, he didn't spend no time. He didn't spend no time at the top of the water, did he? Uh, fish on the depth finder down here. A while ago, when I was in that corner over there, they was all right there at that 10 foot line. And I've got that turned up to like 80, 80%. 80 so it shows the fish real good. This makes me wonder if, if they didn't follow the boat out. Cause sometimes they'll follow your boat right back out because of the because of the shade. We came down here to, to try to find some nesting fish today. And uh, the lake had came up from the storms about eight feet in the last week or so. And of course they're dropping like crazy. The water's stained everywhere. Caught a few small ones. Caught a couple Kentuckys. Uh, nice little small mouth. Now we wasn't trying to catch tournament fish. We was just trying to teach you different ways to fish behind other people. Like 90% of this would have been fished with chatterbait, square bill, or spinnerbait, or even a buzzbait. But you can take a worm and swim it right behind them and catch fish that they're gonna miss. So hopefully this here will help you with, with your next time out in a tournament or just out having a day fun fishing. Well, Clay Wilson, one of our regional biologists, recently returned from California with a quantity of fingerling uh, striped bass, which the Oklahoma Game and Fish Department has imported into the state for experimental purposes. Well, Clay, uh, tell us something about your trip to California and back with these fish. It is now approximately 4 o'clock in the afternoon. We're loading the airplane. That's Captain Saturday, the public information officer at Ardmore Air Force Base, helping me get my parachute fitted. Uh, this airplane took off. We took off at approximately 5 o'clock from Ardmore Air Force Base, and the airplane that you see in the background, you'll see a better shot of there in just a minute, is a C-119 flying boxcar. That's the crew chief. Uh, closing the front door and you get in the airplane from the back. It's approximately 1,500 miles from there to Mather Air Force Base near Sacramento, California, where we picked up the fish, arriving back in Ardmore after 20 hours with the fish aboard. Uh, we were met in Ardmore by personnel from the Game and Fish Department who will unload the uh, approximately half of the fish. There's the a truck from the Durant fish hatchery. The barrel's on it. John Murphy driving the truck. And you can see the back of the airplane. We've taken the doors back and now unloading the striped bass from the airplane to the truck. And half of the fish that we're unloading there will be taken to Lake Murray. And half of them we will acclimate to fresh water. There you see a good picture of the striped bass. And there's a flounder. Uh, ocean fish that accidentally got in with the striped bass. These striped bass were taken out of the river. The men at the Durant Hatchery for a year or so, and we'll, at which time we'll watch them and try to coach them. There are two game rangers uh, moving the fish, and now the fish are on the way to Lake Murray. We are, the airplane in the meanwhile, taking the rest of the fish to the Great Salt Plains Reservoir. And here, that's uh, Howard Sparter, the game ranger, and John Murphy, and there's Dutch Jacobs putting the striped bass into Lake Murray. You bet. Well, we hope today's stories remind you that Oklahoma is such a perfect state to explore. So, however you choose to enjoy our state's incredible natural world, remember, your adventure starts with Outdoor Oklahoma. That good? I think that was good. Okay. Outdoor Oklahoma is produced by the Oklahoma Department of Wildlife Conservation and is proud to serve and be funded entirely by sportsmen and women and outdoor enthusiasts who love and appreciate all things wild in the great state of Oklahoma.